Are you coming over from Serato the Virtual DJ and don't like the keyboard mappings? Let's chat about this. All right, everybody, before we start the video, please navigate down, hit that subscribe button, make sure you ding that notification bell as well. Also, make sure to like the video. And please, if you want to support the channel, head over to my Patreon page and subscribe. So a time ago when I decided to give Virtual DJ a try, one of the biggest problems that I had coming over from Serato was the way the keyboards are mapped. Now, I don't DJ with the keyboard, but being able to, you know, edit my songs, you know, to be able to set my cue points and my loops, you know, doing that uh, with the way Virtual DJ is stocked map was a bit difficult for me to really kind of embrace. And then ultimately I decided, you know, are there some, you know, keyboard mappings? Because Virtual DJ is definitely one of the most customizable, you know, pieces of DJ software out there. And sure enough, you know, there were a few out there, but they weren't quite all what I had, you know, really hoped for. So I took the best what I could find that was out there, merged it with some ideas that I had and some of the things I did like in Virtual DJ and basically came up with this mapping. So when we get to go right ahead, we'll jump on my computer and I'll talk about a few of the key features that really helps me zoom through the process when I'm using Virtual DJ with the keyboard. So this is an amalgamation of some of the Serato uh, shortcuts, some that are Virtual DJ, and a couple things that are uh, me um, that I think uh, gave me some advantage, especially as I'm ingesting stuff in. Um, I like to try to keep to the keyboard as much as possible and not have to go to my mouse and click around as much as possible. So let's just kind of dive in. And one of the first things is going to be loading uh, songs. In this case, it's command left arrow uh, for the left deck and command right arrow for the right deck. Now, um, Virtual DJ, it seems that a lot of their deck split is something that you would actually kind of tab the functionality between deck to deck um, and using the same keys. Again, nothing wrong with that. But the way uh, Serato kind of has it out is having um, similar functionality, but in different key areas. So you'll see if you ever look at a uh, one of those uh, keyboard layovers that you can get for some of the keyboards that are out there, that basically there's a real designated uh, deck A and one for deck B. And sometimes they're kind of mixed um, up on the top row and all that. So you'll see some of these functionalities uh, like that. And there's a lot of dedicated stuff for just the left deck and just the right deck. Um, if you're doing four deck in this case, you know this is probably something that you would not be able to work in with a lot of uh, uh, success uh, from it. But for two deckers like me, I think this works just fine. The next piece would be just playback. And again, this is stolen from Serato functionality. And uh, you just simply hit the W and that's playing it on the uh, deck A, deck B, over to S. Now, if I want to reverse it, I can hit Q. And to disengage it, I just hit Q again and set that up. Now, I do want to set a cue point already. I've actually stripped my cue points out of this to make a couple examples. And with that, I have mapped uh, numbers one through five uh, to map for A, uh, number six through zero to map for B. So I can set up the five cue points immediately just by pressing a number, in this case, number one. As you see, everything's uh, loaded in on that. And if I want to get rid of it, all I have to do is hit Shift and one, and it will remove it. Now, um, this mimics a lot of uh, controllers uh, that are out there that have a shift uh, functionality. If you uh, shift pad, a lot of times you delete that particular saved point for that. Now, the next piece I want to do is an actual loop. So I already know that I'm going to want an eight bar out of this. And in order to save it, all I have to do is hit the option key and then one. Now, this sets up, as you see over here on uh, deck A, I already selected it over to save loops and it automatically brings a loop in there. Uh, so again, very, very nice, very simple to do. And if I want to get rid of it, all I have to do is shift option and one and get rid of it. Now, this doesn't disengage the loop if it is engaged. In order to do that, we'll get into the loop section here. It's O, P in the left bracket for deck A, as you can see, I had that set up there, and then L, the semicolon and the apostrophe for deck B. Now that might not seem a little intuitive um, for some people, but again, it's something that got so used to uh, with the way Serato is, I just maintained that over there. And I am gonna save a loop here. 
again, option one, saved, ready to go. Now, I do know that um, I have some other uh, points I normally uh, would have a loop in here, but I'm gonna set my second uh, cue point here. Let's bring this back to cues for a second, just so you see it. So there's my second cue point, and now I'm gonna get to the break. Turn off my loop here for a second. Break it down for me, fellas. And in this case, I'm gonna set this as three. And actually, I think I'm gonna bring it to 16 bars, and I am gonna save this as my second saved loop. So you can see, I've got one saved loop, I've got a second saved loop. Jump over to that. You see it's already engaged, and again, I can disengage it when I need to. This just became really uh, second nature. Again, all very Serato uh, specific, but being able to map everything in Virtual DJ is definitely a, a beautiful thing to you know, bring that familiarity over. And uh, at least for me and other potential Serato users, switching you know, allows them to just immediately jump in and you know, figure things out you know, pretty quickly. Now, one thing is definitely much more uh, virtual DJ uh, specific, but I have made some custom mappings for is the ability to edit your uh, ID3 tags, edit your POI and edit your BPMs all with uh, keyboard shortcuts. So uh, for those that don't know, first you have to have the song highlighted to make sure that it's loading that in. And for me, it is command I. And this brings in the tag editor, you know, naturally allows me to switch anything uh, out that I want. You know, for me, anybody who's seen my older video, my composer tags are my shortcuts um, to be able to bring up dance songs, cocktail dinner. Um, I have a whole video on that. I'll probably make a newer one uh, just to have something uh, fresh in there. But anybody that knows me, this has been kind of my, my bread and butter uh, that allows me to uh, bring my uh, shortcut filters over here and everything. A lot of that information is brought into here. Grouping I use again for uh, genre, or I should say subgenres. Of course, the main genres, and I keep these very tight to hip hop, R&B, pop, rock, reggae, um, country, classical, uh, jazz. I think that's it. I might be missing one in there, but you get the idea. It's just the core genres, and then everything else is a subgenre. In this case, this is kind of golden age uh, hip hop. Plus, it's really more so pop than anything. You know, most a lot of people don't consider Young MC true hip hop, but he he is. But definitely in the pop side. So this way, if I search for something uh, pop hip hop, it'll automatically uh, pop this up. But very nice and very easy for me to be able to manage all this stuff with just a simple keyboard shortcut. The next thing would be the POI editor. In this case, Command O brings that up in here. You, know, you bring all your uh, stuff that you need in here. I love being able, again, just having a shortcut. There are other ways to get into this. For me, having the keyboard shortcut is definitely much easier. Now you can get into BPMs by just going into the POI editor and into BPMs, but in this case, I can also command P and I bring up the BPM editor. And one thing I have noticed, I think uh, Virtual DJ is slightly sensitive on some songs, um, especially when you get into the lower, you know, like 70s to 80s, or even in the higher into the 160s where sometimes it's either halved or doubled. So there's been times where I just want a quick get in half or double it and get out. So having the keyboard shortcut really helps um, in this uh, level of functionality. But these are the things that has allowed me to really um, you know, move over from Serato, enjoy the big benefits of Virtual DJ, um, and still have the familiarity of workflow. And I think for a lot of people, you know, making that switch, uh, it's a logical thing to have, and I'll have this naturally available uh, for download on my page, on YouTube and whatnot. Uh, but even for virtual DJ people, this might be a new workflow that you haven't considered that might be beneficial uh, to how you work. So I would invite anybody to you know give this a try, see if this is something that seems uh, you know that you would want to use, or maybe you've just gotten so used to virtual DJ um, and the way that that's been functioning for years that this would be a, a bridge too far. Uh, but naturally, I invite people to uh, give this a try.
Well, there's a video and I really hope you enjoyed this and make sure if you do hit that thumbs up, hit subscribe below as well. Make sure that notification bell is rung. Also, if you really want to support the channel, you know, head over to my Patreon page. That definitely helps a lot. And naturally, if you like content like this, you know, just check out everything else on this page and stay healthy and stay well.